when we are describing our data in the form of a table, we construct frequency distribution. But for all the different type of variables, frequency distribution are constructed differently. Like there are three types. Categorical frequency distribution, which is constructed for qualitative variables. Whereas there is ungrouped frequency distribution and group frequency distribution. Both of these frequency distributions are constructed for quantitative variables. Let's look at the vaccination data we just discussed. In this module, we will look at the frequency distribution for qualitative variables. The first variable that was qualitative in our data was sex that has male and female. The very first step to construct a categorical frequency distribution is that we construct an ordered array where we order these observations according to their categories. Since sex is a nominal variable, it doesn't have to consider the magnitude of the values it attains. Like in this case, male and female, these are just the name only. These are just the categories which do not carry the magnitude along with them. Therefore, it doesn't matter if we write male first and female second, or female first or male second. To construct a frequency distribution out of it, firstly, we'll make a grid where the first column is a class. A class variable, a class column, contains all the possible categories of our categorical variable. Like in this case, the two distinct possible categories are male and female. We also want to make sure that these categories are mutually exclusive and they contain all the possible values of your variable. In this case, sex variable has two possibilities, either male or female. Once we're done with this, we start constructing the tally marks. Tally marks are the bars which identify each single individual. The first response over here is male. The first tally will be like this. Second is male. Third is male. Fourth is male. When it comes to the fifth tally, it goes across. Then there is sixth male. Then you count these tallies and write down this mark. Similarly for female, there are four females. So you will note down four tallies, one, two, three, four, and then note down their frequency. In here, we can always total the frequency, and in this case it is 10, which is also called summation F, which is also equals to the number of observation in our sample. Similarly, we can look at the other variable status that has possible values 1 and zeros. We created an ordered array and here goes the frequency distribution for the variable status where 0 comes 4 times and 1 comes 6 times and in total there are 10 observation which is summation F. We can also construct a relative frequency distribution for the categorical variables. Once we have the frequency distribution of a variable like sex, relative frequency distributions are obtained by taking the proportions. It is 6 divided by the total number of observation. It's the frequency divided by the total, which is equals to 0 0.6. Similarly, for female, it is 4 divided by the total. It is 0 0.4. Relative frequencies always adds up to 1. For a variable status, it will be a relative frequency distribution. As soon as we add relative frequency column into a frequency distribution, it turns out to be a relative frequency distribution. Then we have ungrouped frequency distribution. It is a frequency distribution where each class is only 
one unit away is one unit wide. Meaningful when the data does not take on many values. Each class is constructed using a single data value in each class. Let's look at it. When we are to construct an ungrouped frequency distribution, we need to follow a few steps. The very first step, as, as usual, is to construct an ordered array. The second step is the construction of the classes. And the third step is the construction tally mark. And the last step is counting these tally marks to construct frequency distributions. Let's take a variable where we have a discrete variable considered. That is the number of surgeries performed in an operation theater in past 20 days. When there are five surgeries performed on the first day, three surgeries are performed on the second day, and there are two surgeries performed on the 20th day. Using this variable to construct an ungrouped frequency distribution, the very first step that we take is the construction of an ordered array, where we arrange the, the data from minimum value to the largest value. Once we are done with this ordered array, then we start constructing its tally marks. Since we have six number of classes over here, starting from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and you will notice one thing that between this class and this class, the width is one unit. Now, to construct the tally marks, we have two zeros in our data. So we will construct two tallies, three ones, four twos. We have three threes in our, four threes in our data, three fours, and four fives in our data. And we will note down their frequencies along with them. Two, three, four, four, three, and four. This is a way to construct an ungrouped frequency distribution. Moreover, we can construct ungrouped relative frequency distribution. We will use the frequencies and divide them by total, like here. The current frequency is 2, and the total is denoted by sum f, which is 20. 2 divided by 20 equals to the relative frequencies. The relative frequencies are denoted by rf. You want to keep in mind that sum of the relative frequencies is always equals to 1. It also can be converted into the percentages where we can interpret relative frequencies in percentages like there are 10% zero surgeries. There are 20% surgeries. On the 20% of the days, three surgeries were performed. On 15% of the days, four surgeries were performed. Frequency distributions are one of the many ways to summarize and organize our data. Frequency distributions provide a very good way to have a good glimpse at a data that may not be seen in, in, uh, in, in much more meaningful way with the naked eye. Thank you.